Hello, everybody. Hello. How are you? I feel like, Shannon, I feel like last week we had a theme song and now I just feel like inadequate because we, I know. we need to come up with a general theme song for right. Bariatric Foodie Live. We need like something. We need a ditty. We need a ditty. A, a ditty. Sweet, a little ditty. Yeah, not yes. like a full, not like a yep. full theme song, but just like a little ditty that we do yes. in the beginning. Yes. I nominate you to sing it because I'll be like a backup person. I'll beatbox for you. <laughs> I will. I will do you that. Know, for you. you know, I did write. I did write a school song once. I was in like fourth grade. I wrote a school song. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so I could probably, I mean, we could probably do this. Okay, we'll work on this ditty. Uh, uh, we'll work on and it. We will pro- and it will be on sale on iTunes. <laughs> yeah, I'm always trying to sell something on iTunes. <laughs> anyway, hi, 13 viewers. You know Hello. what? All we got to do is put the words back on track and something. And we get 13 viewers, like, right off the bat. Right. Hello. Let's do it. Hey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we ready for this? Okay. Yes. Please say hi as you come in because we have insecurity issues and we, we need positive feedback. Yes. And- <laughs> All the time. Every minute. Like, okay. yes. Yes. So, anyway, you just in case Share. you are Share joining us. us for the first time. <laughs> Hi YouTube, because we, we we put the show on YouTube. Hi YouTube. Hi that lady who thinks that I talk too much. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Last week's oh. whole episode was Shannon talking. I know you Go like it. Go back and watch it. Go back anyway. and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is Bariatric Foodie Live, your your weekly dose of bariatric silliness, and I am your one of your co-hosts. Uh, what is my name? Oh, Nick. Yeah. He's my lovely co-host. Hi, Shannon. Shannon. You know me. Shannon. You know me. She's Shannon. like, you know me. Whatever. You know me. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> oh, we got, right. We got okay. someone who says they can't wait to get back on track. Okay. Well, we're going to do it. Well, but first, we got a little We got a little bit of business to <laughs> take care of. First, we got some business. We'll get there. We'll we'll get get there. there. We got mm-hmm. some business. All right. So this episode. Now, you guys are so used to me saying, like, when I say this is Bariatric Foodie Live, sponsored by who? Who? Who is it usually sponsored by, Shannon? Anyone? Bariatric Pal. It's not sponsored by Bariatric Pal tonight. No. Mm-mm. Oh, my goodness. It's like a changing of the guard. Not that we, we still love Bariatric Pal. Yes, we do. This, this particular episode is not sponsored by Bariatric Pal. This particular mm-hmm. episode is actually fittingly sponsored by the Bariatric Foodie Back on Track Toolkit. Now, tonight, yes. we're going to start a conversation, and it's going to be a two-part conversation, which will inevitably spill over into, like, the whole rest of our damn lives uh, mm-hmm. about getting mm-hmm. back on track. But we're going to start the conversation about getting back on track. But if you need help taking those first steps, we, we do have a resource for you. Um, mm-hmm. And that is the, the ba- Bariatric Foodie Back on Track Toolkit. And this is something that is on the Bariatric Foodie website. It is not some magic three-step system that is going to easily easily and safely return you back to being a new post-op in 3.2 days. No, no, that is not what it does. But here's what it is. It will help you to figure out where you are and where you want to be. Um, it will help you make some short-term goals to get you to where you want to be and nudge you to do the things that some of the things that we're going to warn you or talk about tonight. Um, and then also it's going to give you a collection, a weekly plan of recipes that are protein forward, lower carb, to sort of get you over the hump of uh, getting back on track, transitioning from maybe less optimal eating to better eating um, while you wait to see your dietitian, who is really the person you need to go see. So the Bariatric Foodie Back on Track Toolkit is available on bariatricfoodie.com if you go to bariatricfoodie.com forward slash back on track. So yes. but don't but don't leave. No, stay here. No. We'll give you the link again at the end of the show. Don't yes. leave, but check we it out after you. the show. Yes, we want you to stay here. Stay your stay, br- stay your stay. Br- right here. No, we're we moms. Got, we got stuff to talk about. So anyway, so while anybody puts in their burning questions, yes, we need we some have, burning questions. We have a relatively new thing that we're going to start doing every week, and we'll see how long we can keep this going. I don't know. We are, we never. Right. 
we never know how far things are going to go. We just try sure. stuff out and see what sticks. We up. are like fly by the seat of our pants people. Like you know. we just, you know, we are. All right. So we're, we're having some people that are having trouble. They're not seeing anything. Let's see. Someone, um, some, pe- some people are seeing. And what right. I see one person who doesn't see. There was one Is, other. I think sometimes you have to like back out of back the out and go back and then, in and then go back in. And then a lot of times you will um, get into the live. But yeah, right. if was... you see us say, yeah, because if I know that if at least some of you can see, oh, wait a minute. Somebody says, where is Nikki? Mm-hmm. Do you have it on another screen, Shannon? I'm yes, I have it on another screen. I, I, was it, I hear it. Right. Oh, no, so she sorry. got no. Oh, okay. No, I think yeah. People are there. We go. People are giving the hints. That's what I was planning on doing. So nice. Okay, Nancy, you may have to refresh, or you may have to kill the app and then go back in. Yes. Sometimes Facebook is just wonky. You guys saw what happened to Zuck at Congress uh, last week. I think he's still traumatized. He hasn't had time to do any of his work, and it's just it's hard. Okay. The struggle. Hard. Okay. So anyway, back to this new thing that we're we're gonna start (laughs) doing. Because like I said, we throw things at the wall to see if they stick, okay, Mm -hmm. is we're going to like, we're going to take turns, but I'm going to go first because I absolutely did not tell Shannon that we were doing this. (laughs) So she's going to go next week, but we're going to highlight products that we are crushing on. And so my product that I'm crushing on right now is the following. Can you see this? Mm, Yes. It is the ProCare Health Sea Salted Caramel calcium chew and i'm just going to do like the quickest little tasting ever because first of all um okay so one chew is 15 calories uh three grams of carbs there's two grams of sugar in there uh 500 milligrams of calcium 500 milligrams of vitamin d um and uh i like that packaging it is. It's, it's it's very beautiful. serene looking. It's very like looks like what you would get as like a spa or something. Right. So then you reach inside, you reach inside and you get like this little gold nugget yes. of calcium. Yes. And then yes, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this really quickly because we've got to talk about getting back on track. Right. But I just want you guys to know why I'm crushing on this because this is like let me just set this up for you. Is like I eat lunch and then I want a little something sweet after lunch and mm-hmm. Also, it is time to take my vitamin. So, this right here. So, see, it's a legit, like, it's a legit caramel. It's mm-hmm. like, this is like, it's like Werther's, okay? Yes. Okay. I'm going to need to get some of those. Hint, hint. Okay. okay. <laughs> Pro-care. Holla. Anyway. <laughs> I ain't put it in your mouth, right? Mm-hmm. And it's chewy. <laughs> I can see that. Which... <laughs> Caramel is supposed to be chewy. Yes. But then you get a sweet, but it's not like sickly sweet. Mm-hmm. And you can taste that little bit of salt. Oh, yes. It's like, it's hitting the right places. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get my cup. But see, I can't do like four of these. I have to like ration them out because how many mm-hmm. of these? These are 30. Wait yeah. a minute, how, many, how many do I have left? I'm going to say maybe I have about 15 or 16 left. So yeah, oh that's my. It looks so good. I can't even talk now. Finish up, finish up. <laughs> Anybody got any burning questions? I can't see the comments anymore. Like they look like they're I know, refreshing. Something, something weird happened because everybody's profile pictures left. Right. I think we might. I might have to like. Okay, I may have to. What do I do? Am I gonna? Okay. My phone has like 12% on it, but I may have to <laughs> monitor. <laughs> right? Oh, wait a minute. Somebody just came through. Okay. Because sometimes when it does that, it like doesn't show me the, the comments until like it spits them all out mm-hmm. at one time. We'll see. Because my phone literally, it has like 11% now. Right. Oh, okay. So that's a product I'm crushing on this week. It was the ProCare Vitamins um, Soft Calcium Chew Salted Caramel. Mm-hmm. And you can learn more about that by going to ProCareNow.com. I'll put yes. the link in the status message after the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So mm-hmm. the topic at hand today, Shannon, yes. let's, let's get back on track, girl. Yes, let's do. In so many ways, we need to get back. We need to get back on track with the conversation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is such a problem for us. Okay. <laughs> 
getting back on track. Okay, so first of all, we got to start by framing the conversation. So if you guys wouldn't mind sharing, I know it's a lot to ask when you're on the cell phone, you got to do the beady, beady, beady stums, but in as as few words as you possibly can, I just want to know from you guys, in your mind, what does it mean to be quote unquote off track? What does it, yeah, let's do the quotes. Off track. Your quotes are like, pull it down. Pull it down. Wax on. Wax on. (laughs) Anyway, what does it mean to be off track? And specifically, like, Shannon, do you think, like, because to me, okay, my conception of being off track is different than when I was newly post-op. My conception of being off track as a new post-op was doing anything that I, that wasn't, like, in my conception of perfection. Yeah. And I think that's common. And so it was like, if I ate, like, any carb... Mm-hmm. Like you put your My Fitness Pal, and if it said anything above zero carbs, I was off mm-hmm. track. Somebody just said that <laughs> eating carbs. <laughs> eating carbs. Yep. If eating carbs. I didn't exercise for like an hour a day, five times a week, mm-hmm. if I thought about Oreo cookies, mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't even have to actually eat them if I thought about them. Um, no, but no, honestly, it was it was more about like you know not ever doing not ever indulging not ever taking a break you have to like keep going 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 mm-hmm. all the time so now, now Shannon, what do you think do you think that a person can be and guys you can weigh in on this question too what, do you think that you can be off track if you actually haven't regained anything yet absolutely i think you can i think sometimes people get um kind of settled in a place and they and they kind of lose focus and what they're doing isn't inherently like over the top bad but it is it's setting up like a dynamic to bring back old habits which eventually would bring you to a place where you may have may gain weight but i think you definitely can be off track and not have regained weight yeah and sometimes you can be like completely off the rails and you just haven't gained any weight right <laughs> Right. It's like I've had people like that where they t- they're they like, I'm completely off track. And I'm like, oh, well, what do you mean? And they're like, you know, I'm eating like all and the things that they're eating. Yes, they are completely off. like I don't care what definition or how lenient or stringent you are with your definition. Mm-hmm. Like by definition, some folks I've talked to have been, but they have not gained not an ounce because right. some people weight loss surgery just does these magical things to your metabolism. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I almost think that it's harder to sort of rein yourself in because there isn't that, that negative feedback of having gained. Like sometimes people are scared that they've, they've gained, they will gain weight. But you know, if you don't gain weight, like gaining weight is like a hello right in your face. Something's not right. I need to do something. Mm -hmm. But if you're not gaining weight, it can almost be harder to find the justification to, to get back right. on the right track. Completely, completely agree with so, that. Okay, so next question for you, Shannon, mm-hmm. your opinion on is, do you think that you can go off track more than once? Is it still going off track if it happens more than once, you think? Um, I think... Hmm. That's a good question. Because I, I see people who are like, you know, who go through things and then they pull themselves together and then they go through things again. They pull them. And I myself several times have pulled. And it's right. like, you know, somebody asked me a good question. It's like, when is it, when has it gone beyond you know, right. going off track? When are you, when have you just let your lifestyle go? Right. That's a, that is a good question. Cause I mean, I know that I've done that too, where I, I've found myself back to a place where I didn't want to be and I've pulled myself together and then it, it just, it just happens. It just, you know, you kind of lose, like I said, you lose focus or you, you know, you, you stop thinking about, you know, where you are and what you're doing and, and it's easy to do that. Um, So I think you can go off track more than once. Yeah. And see, that's the thing is to me, when you're, when you're, I don't want to call anybody a lost cause, but when you have the, 
point where I feel like it goes beyond being off track. The the off track on track thing, and it, it's such weird language to me. Like, so right. I'm on the track. On the tra- I have one foot on the track and one foot off the track. <laughs> but no. But um, is the desire to get back to that's, being healthy. And if you going. have lost the desire or the will to even try anymore, that's the point where you gotta like you need a big kick in the butt. Right. Um, I totally agree with that. And same thing. Yeah. And then, you know, so it's like, I feel like that if you know, if you know you're doing things wrong and you just simply don't have it in you to do anything to fix it whatever you know yeah you're just like (sighs) yeah and that doesn't mean you're a lost cause that just doesn't help getting yourself out of where you where you are and the thing um the 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 thing that gets me is that people think of like it's sort of a dichotomy if you think about it it's like it's not are you on track or are you off track there's going to be some times in your life where you're going to be you know in any life where you practice moderation in anything sometimes you're going to be in a, a little mini season of indulgence maybe mm-hmm. sometimes you're going to be in a season re- of restriction sometimes like, your life is going to have different situations where you're really on top of it and sometimes you gotta let some things go um so it's not necessarily a, a dichotomy of either you're on track or you're off track and especially not in a life where you're you're you know moderating things um that are that are in your life especially food exercise you know there's sometimes where i go to the gym i'm faithful with the gym like three or four times a week and then like right now since we've been doing our step bed my the step bed has totally been just vacation shannon mm-hmm. i've been to the gym i haven't i, I the last step bed i was in i, I went to the gym a lot because it was freaking cold polar outside so i had to do the treadmill to get my mm-hmm. steps in but you know i haven't been to the gym the last few weeks i've been walking I mean, like my, my little Fitbit, I'm so impressed with my Fitbit. I'm like five miles yesterday, six mm-hmm. miles a day. So, yeah. So you're going to have times in your life, you know, I have times in my life where I, it seems like I can eat anything that's not nailed down. And sometimes where I can't hardly eat anything. I know you guys can all relate. But the last thing I wanted to throw out there to you is um, what do you guys think? Because we're going to we're, we're gonna go deeper into this conversation. But what do you guys think is a, an important first step? and getting yourself back on track. Answer that question, but we're gonna move forward, but I want you guys to answer that question. What do you think should be the first step in getting back on track? So where we're gonna go from here is that we, today we're gonna discuss, and it's important to discuss this first because a lot of times when I give advice to folks, and the advice is not comfortable or not what they want to do and they kind of squirm and try to get out of it and da 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 It's like, it's important to discuss the pitfalls first because then the advice that we give you is going to make a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So um, we're going to discuss the pitfalls first. And conveniently, when we brainstorm pitfalls, there just so happen to be five of them. Don't you like, I don't know when a plan works together. No, it's like five, five, top five, top five ish, you know? So we're we're going to top five. So we're going to go over these five things that we, we, five pitfalls that we, we, and it's not only stuff that we've experienced, because I I don't know, I'm not going to speak for Shannon to see how many times she's felt like she's been off track, but I like a bazillion and seven, okay? Um, <laughs> but like I said, what to me, what differentiates it is each and every time I've wanted to work my way back to doing what I was supposed to do. And I diligently sought out what I needed to do and got myself there. Um, and so uh, that, that that's where I put it. But these are pitfalls I've experienced. I know some of them are things that you've experienced. And then just we pay attention to, you, you may not believe it, we pay attention to every little thing you guys post, every little personal message that you send. So, so the things that we've seen you guys struggle with um, to be able to get yourself back and rein yourself in on your healthy lifestyle. So without further ado, did you hear that, Shannon? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the five pitfalls to getting back on track. Pitfall number one is not really knowing what on track is in the first place. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing is on track means different things to different people. And I'll give you the example of me versus my very good friend that I was hanging out with last week, Shelly Vicari, AKA Eggface. 
I feel like I'm like name dropping. I'm like, I, you yes, know, you are. Hang, I was just hanging out with Egg Face the other day. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm such a fan girl. Awesome. I'm such an Egg Face fan girl. Okay, if Egg Face had like T-shirts, I would like have the T-shirt and the hat and the mm-hmm. trucker hat and everything. The water bottle. Yes, and the keychain. <laughs> And the bumper sticker. So, um, so I was hanging out with her, and on her blog, you can see that her main uh, um, form of activity has pretty much been she's she's a walker. She walks a lot. She, I mean, no, she walks a lot, and she doesn't get tired either. Because we were walking like Friday night. I was like, dude, we're like in Tampa, and it's kind of humid, and I'm like, dude, I'm kind of tired, yeah. but. But, you know, she walks like in the beginning of my journey, my I was like, you know, I was trying to be Miss Fitness Bunny. Right. Mm-hmm. Miss Bunny. I like fitness. Like and that's the same thing between me and you. You're not necessarily a gym rat. I am mm-hmm. like I love going to the gym. It's just sometimes the motivation with all the other stuff in my life isn't there. But I really, really enjoy that stuff. You really, really don't enjoy that stuff. So you're on track and my on track are not going to be the same on track. Mm-hmm. Um and so I see this first pitfall manifest itself in one of two ways. One is that you you think of on track as the things that you should be doing versus the things that actually fit your lifestyle, personality, and abilities. And then the second thing is just not even knowing what or not remembering or sort of losing yourself in what it is that, that you want to be doing, what it is is of your mission. Um, because I cannot tell you how many times I've corresponded with people who say, oh, well, I want to get back to, I'm so off track. I, I want to go back to being active. I'm, okay, what does that mean? Well, I want to move my body more. Yes, but what does that mean? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like you go like three or four rounds of this. Like, does that mean you want to go to the to the gym? Does it mean that you want to take a Zumba class? Does it mean you want to learn ballroom dancing? Does it mean you want to, you know, get out of your seat? Boxing? Yeah, get out of your seat for 10 more minutes a day because you're in your seat all day long. You want to take or, you a know. romantic walk on the beach with yeah. your hubby? What, right. what, does what, does what does this mean to you? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you to be a person who is active? What does it mean to you to be a person who is uh, a healthy eater? What does it mean to you to moderate? What do these concepts mean to you because if you're like when you're working on being back on track and you don't know what these things are i i liken it to like trying to to drive somewhere that you've never been before and you have no idea how to get there and you're not using gps <laughs> it's, it's like it's mm-hmm. not gonna work you're gonna end up somewhere weird right. with a wino on the corner and a rat <laughs> Mm-hmm. Or in Diane's case, when I was hanging out with Diane last week, you're going to end up somewhere with a gator. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. very disappointed. Diane took me out and we did not see any gators. She said it was because it was the evening. Uh. But I was looking for some gator action, Shannon. <laughs> But anyway, so that is pitfall number one is not really knowing what on track is in the first place, because you got to know what it is for you, not just like in general. Yes, there are general guidelines. Move your butt, eat your protein, drink your water, blah, blah, blah. blah. But what does that mean in your life? What, how did it manifest it when you were at your best? How did that manifest itself for you? Mm-hmm. Because you're on track, my on track, Shannon's on track, all different. We're on different tracks. Mm-hmm. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wow, that was I pulled, I pulled that, that one out of nowhere. Did that, was some, that was kind of shady. Like that was some shade, just a little. No, that wasn't shady. No, was but no, what I'm of. saying is, like, you know, do you? Shady, don't try to. Don't right. try to be me. Yeah, that's not, not shady. Okay. Been shady. I don't even know what. Yeah, it could have been shady. Yes, could have been. <laughs> Moving right along to pitfall number two, which Shannon will talk about. All right. So number fifth. Pitfall number two. I don't what I'm telling you. I told you I'm my whole life is messed up. Pitfall number two is making too many changes all at once. Um, and this is a big, uh, big problem for people because, um, they start jumbling up their whole life. Everything changes. And one, I think it makes it harder to figure out what exactly you're tr- trouble is to begin with. So, you know, you may not be totally off track with every single thing that you think you're on, you're off track with. And if you go ahead and change up everything all at once, you're never going to get to a place where you know exactly what's troubling you. Plus it's freaking overwhelming. Right. Like you're trying to like eat zero carbs and 500 calories and exercise 45 hours a day and walk 12,000 miles. That's like, good God. Right. And I think the other thing about this particular pitfall is um, that 
it's not a sustainable thing. Just like we, you know, we talk about this a lot, changing every single thing. It's important it's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's really, really hard to make those changes and keep all of those changes. So you, you know, you kind of set yourself up for feeling like you're failing because you're not hitting everything you think you should be hitting all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that that's just, it's a huge, a huge problem when you start getting, when you start thinking about getting back on track is you, you, you can't really put all of your energy into one or two things that you really know are giving you trouble, you're, you're spreading yourself way too thin. Like, yeah. Really thin. It's like, you know, get good at like one thing. Right. And to me, for me, like habits, you know, we know it takes mm-hmm. a while to, to start a habit and you have to do it for a while to start a habit. I think like science says something like 66 days of yeah. actually doing something to make it a habit. So, you know, uh, doing everything all at once is going to keep you from doing anything effectively enough. Right. To make it a habit. So, yeah, mm-hmm. too, too much all at once. It's like, do all the things. I'm going to do all the things. Yep. No, don't no, do all the things. Don't okay. do all the things. Okay, so pitfall number three is slightly, well, it's not shady, but it sounds shady. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. This is mm-hmm. going to be a generalized state. We see this so much. So much. All the time. So much, which is pitfall number three. Y'all out here trying to be newbies again. I had to let that one sit. Right? I'm out here trying to be newbies again. <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what I mean by that is if you are going from like eating way too much, like, oh my gosh, my pouch can accommodate way too much. Then the next day you're, you're trying to go to like eating two ounces at a time or only doing like three protein shakes a day mm-hmm. or something like that. It, I'm not saying it's not possible. What I am saying is that it's not sustainable. And when something's not sustainable and it's unnecessarily hard, first of all, that's kind of torturous. It's like when you're coming down off of, like my, my dietician told me that when you're coming off of like a lot of starchy carbs, simple carbs, what she personally told me, consult with your own dietician, don't be, don't be trying to bogart my dietician's advice, um, is that um, the best way to co- to combat that once I had basic eating capacity is to like combat it with lots and lots and lots of fiber. So she's like, you know, your carrot sticks, your cucumbers, your zucchini, your, your veggies, all of those mm-hmm. things, because you're going to be super duper duper freaking hungry because you've been eating all of these starches all this time. Mm-hmm. And you know what it proved right? Every time I go off the rails with starches, it's like, I'm super duper duper hungry for a few days and that's perfectly normal because of the biochemistry of your body but yeah no going like trying to be a newbie again like so trying to be like where you have these super teeny teeny tiny portions you don't mm-hmm. oh i don't want to eat no mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not your life anymore you are not a newbie anymore you have to mm-hmm. approach it like the, the big girls and boys that we are mm-hmm. um and you know have an eating plan that sort of transitions you out of the choices that you are making and into the choices that you want to be making, but recognizing that, you know, like for me, I'm 10 years post-op. I'm never going to be 10 days post-op again. I'm 10 years post-op. I I don't have that stomach anymore. I'm not going to have that stomach anymore. So in recognizing it, I'm not going to do like my two, you know, protein shakes a day thing um, and and trying to be a newbie again. That just does not work. So don't do that. Recognize that you, is my phone ring? Oh, dear Lord, people trying to call me and stuff. You know, it says no caller ID. I bet you it's my father. And I bet you when I get off this live, I'm going to have a 15 minute voicemail from my father about how I never pick up the phone. But then he's always like, no caller ID. I'm like, look, I don't know who you are. You could be a salesperson. <laughs> Maybe it's like some random, I don't know. I don't think I have any bill collectors, but you could be a bill collector. Right. I don't know who you are when you're no caller ID. Who this? Who this? Who this? Who that? (laughs) Anyway. Who this be? Hit ball (laughs) number four, Shannon. That's me? Yeah, that's you. Oh, it's me. No, it's you. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the thing. It says you. Unless you, I mean, I'll go, I'll go for it, but. No, I'll go for it. All right. I messed up the notes. I was like shuffling stuff and then it was like, like that. I'm, I'm whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm, 
I'm dance party. I don't know what you are doing. Anyway, <laughs> back me up. Anyway, oh my goodness. whatever. It's me. Okay. I just feel like the person on YouTube is gonna get me, Shannon. She's gonna be like, "You're talking too much." I'm really insecure about this one person making one comment. Right. Let it go. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna let it go. Okay, so. <laughs> Pitfall number four. You you're doing pitfall number five though. So there you go. Right. Pitfall right. number four is avoiding your medical team and instead getting medical advice from fellow post ops. Now here's the thing. Here's my caveat for this one. Is it's there's nothing wrong with dear God, what in the world? It's like, oh, it was my father, and now he's calling back from a number that recognizes as my father. So now I'm gonna have two 15-minute voicemails about how go. I never answered the phone. Anyway. Dad, I'm on Bariatric Foodie Live. You should watch the live show, and then you would know. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I love my daddy, y'all. One day we have to have him on the show. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> so here's the thing is it's perfectly okay for us to get advice from each other based on the perspective of, hey, I'm going through this. Have you ever been through this? What was your experience? We should not be taking each other's uh, advice as medical advice. And so what I see a lot of times is a strong reluctance to contact one's medical team. Like there have been people who like, I think I stretched my pouch. I'm able to eat all this much. Da, 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 da. Okay. Let me just stop and say this categorically. There is no exception to this rule. If you really and truly did stretch your pouch, there is no diet reset, um, fiber supplement, protein supplement that is going to fix that. That is an yep. anatomical problem. And who do we go to for anatomical problems? We go to our doctor. Mm -hmm. Doctor. So, you know, those sorts of things. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I think my, my pouch is stretched out. Or, oh my gosh, I, I, I feel like my appetite is way out of whack and I don't know where it's supposed to be. Okay, yeah, there is helpfulness in going to others and saying, you know, are you able to eat this much at, at such and such and so and so uh, surgery age? However, once you get that feedback, once you get that perspective, if you still feel like there's a problem, you need to go to your team. You need to make an appointment with your surgeon. You need to make an appointment with your dietitian. You need to make an appointment with whoever you need to make an appointment with to get it checked out. Those are the people you went for them for to them for treatment for obesity. Treatment for obesity does not end. The surgery is not the end of the road. Obesity is a chronic disease. It chronic meaning you you have obesity forever. Oh, that was ugly. Forever. Anyway. <laughs> no, seriously, you do. You have it forever and ever and ever. It's something you're always going to have to manage. Even after you get to your goal weight, you still have obesity. You have to manage it. You have to make sure that the excess, the excess weight is a symptom of obesity. Obesity is a disease. Um, so basically, you're going to have to manage it with your medical team for the rest of your life. So if you have a problem um, and your, your, you know, your hunger, your habits, your eating capacity, your anything is out of control, go see your doctor. There's not anybody here, even if they do have MD or RD behind their name, they're not your doctor. So there's really nobody here in the Foodie Nation who can cure you, who can give you the path to the right way. You need yep. to work with your team to get there. Um, and sometimes if you have, like, I know some people have like wonky doctor setups. We'll talk about that a little bit um, next week, but mm -hmm. I understand, but we, we still got to get you to a point where you're dealing with the proper professionals to be able to, to address your problem. Okay, so what exactly. is the last pitfall, Shannon? Pitfall number five is out of whack expectations. Um, and this we see a lot, um, a lot. And the thing that I think the biggest part of this that most people don't even realize is that if you've, it, in relation to like weight gain or regain, um, when you put it in to your mind that you're going, you know, I have to lose weight. I, I've gained 20 pounds. I need to lose that, that weight. It needs to come off. The thing that people don't really, um, think about is that it's not as easy to lose weight the second time. It doesn't come off as fast. The, you know, there's a lot more work that kind of is involved in doing what you are intending to do the third, second, third, fourth time, you know, that, that those, it's never as easy as it was in the beginning. Yeah. It's never as easy. 
Because in, in for several it, reasons, really. Yeah. I mean, physio- physiologically, your body is not the same. You have, you know, your your pouch is matured. Your, you know, your, your metabolism. Your metabolism is is different. Um, I was just reading something where um, it was like once when you when you've lost a good amount of like a, a lot of weight, your metabolism slows down. And then it and then it becomes the it becomes harder than to lose more weight because your metabolism has slowed down. And so you have to really know you have to really have that expectation in your mind that it's not going to be as easy as it was before. Yeah. And I think that that goes along with some of the other stuff that we have we have said, like, you know, it's it, just recognizing. And the thing about it is recognizing that something is difficult does not mean it's impossible and it does not mean you're being a downer. It means that you are recognizing that there's challenges to what it is that you want to do. And you're thinking of ways to either help yourself, you know, get over those humps or accommodate with them, live with them, whatever you need to do. Yeah. So, um, you know, th- the first time that, you know, I lost weight, I thought I lost weight painfully slowly, but I lost a hundred pounds in six months. You know, I don't think I lost a hundred grams in the last six months, but still, <laughs> but, but right. still, but still right. yes. So you make a good point. It's like, it's not going to be the same as the, right. the, the first time around. And you should expect that because if you, the thing that, the, how that plays out is if you, if you go in into it with that expectation, then you're not calling yourself a failure. If you didn't lose 10 pounds the first week, you're not mm-hmm. saying, oh, this, maybe this isn't working. If you only lose two or three pounds in the first week or something like that, which is still like a really good rate of loss. Right. Um, so yeah, so it, it's sort of the story that you tell yourself mm-hmm. um, throughout the whole thing. So mm-hmm. those right. and I think another thing about this, the expectations is that um, you don't, a lot of people don't take into consideration that they've, that they've been out of a mindset for very long. So, you know, trying to go right back to certain mindsets and certain behaviors and certain things. It's not, I mean, you're not going to immediately wake up tomorrow and go and, and be able to do everything the Mm -hmm. exact same way. You're not going to be able to do that. It's got to, there's work that has to be done before you get to that place. That, and that is a perfect segue to what I wanted to say. Now you are just, you are on it today, Shannon. You are like, your brain wasn't working right. That was a ruse, Shannon. That was a ruse. (laughs) Okay, so these are the pitfalls that we see most commonly, the five common pitfalls that we see now. So you might be wondering, okay, so if these are the pitfalls, how do you get back on track? And not to be a cliffhanger, not to be like a dun-dun-dun, but we are going to talk about that next week because we have been trying consciously to be considerate to people watching the replay and in general and not have such a long show. We're like at an hour and 15 minutes in some of these shows. It's like, dear Lord. Um, so we are going to talk about that next uh, next week's show. Mm-hmm. But what we wanted to leave you with is the fact that, like, even as we were coming into this conversation, I saw people make some disparaging remarks about themselves. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm so disappointed. I'm so disgusted. I've done this. I've done that. Mm-hmm. Stop that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. stop that it is not a straight line it is not on the track off the track you are alive you are human and if nothing else I would empower you and challenge you to treat yourself as nicely as you would treat somebody else who you were helping through this situation so when we come into this conversation next Thursday we're going to talk about the best advice that we've seen and experienced on getting back on track and what I want you to do and what I want to empower you to do is come into that conversation ready to listen without judgment to yourself or others Mm -hmm. okay because we have you Shannon you ask people a lot about whether what we think um, leads to regain. And you use that actual phrase without judgment to yourself or others. Mm-hmm. And that's how you need to come into this conversation because making yourself feel guilty and beating yourself up, not productive, no. doesn't do anything doesn't do productive. Anything. Not a thing. Not a thing. So what we want to do is come into this conversation ready to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we want to come into this conversation ready to do something, ready to make a change, ready to hear this advice, ready to take action on what, we think will work for us. So that's what we're going to get into next week on 
um, Bariatric Foodie Live, and I wanted to remind you of a couple of outgoing um, pieces of business, which is, once again, um, this episode is sponsored by the Bariatric Foodie Back on Track Toolkit. Like I said, it's not a quick fix. It's not an easy thing. It's it's a jump start to getting yourself, de- determining those first couple of steps and address it to that especially that first pitfall of not even knowing what on track is. It's going to help you outline what it means to be on track. And then it's going to help you make those critical first goals and follow through with those first goals to be able to get you back to where you want to be. So if you are interested in learning more about that, you can go to bariatricfoodie.com forward slash back on track and you will get all of the information about that. Um, It is a downloadable resource, so it'll come to you electronically. It's an instant thing. You don't have to wait for it. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece of business I always have is to sign up for show updates. Seriously, sign up for show updates if you haven't already, because it's the best way to find out what we're talking about on Thursday nights and to um, remind yourself, because we send you a reminder about 15 minutes before the show starts and we give you a direct link to get here. Mm-hmm. So you want to sign up for that. So yes. I do believe we are finished in 40 minutes, Shannon. Wow. Virtual That's high five. It. So next week, right? join us. We may not get through it all in 40 minutes next week, but we'll, right. you know, we'll try not to ramble. Right. But did, that, we, did we want to ask for questions? If oh, there, yeah. Yeah. Does, if, if anybody, let me, let me just look through here and see if anybody, because I saw a lot of encouraging and a lot of like people sharing their experiences Ruth shared experiences. Lori shared experiences. I don't see any questions um, so far. So, but some really good advice here. You guys are kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. So, let's see. But if you do have any questions and we didn't get to them, leave them in the comments. We'll come back. We right. will answer them. But that is what we have for you guys tonight. So we will see you next week, by which time Shannon will have composed a whole ditty. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> ah! I'm going to give you time on the ditty. Okay, okay. thank you. give you I time on the ditty, especially since you're going to the zoo tomorrow and taking yes. sushi for lunch. I know. <laughs> I'm so extra. You're just, she's extra. Guys, so extra. extra. Anyway, um, oh wait a minute. We did. We got a. Oh, we got a question slide in at the last minute. Okay, we're gonna. Wait, okay, okay. So, what if you don't? Uh, wait a minute. I don't see it on the screen. What? It Please says. Do you see it on the screen? I do see it. Okay, because I don't see it on his. I know I can see the question. I just couldn't oh, see it come up you across. Couldn't the get it to come what, up. Okay. What if you don't feel comfortable talking to your dietitian or nutritionist? You need to get a new one. Yep. <laughs> You're not bound to the dietitian or nutritionist that's with your surgical practice. It's just sort of convenient because they work already work with your surgeon. They already work with your team, but you are not bound to that person. Right. So if you are not comfortable, if you are not with a professional that you feel comfortable going to for help, you need to try and search out a new one if at all possible. If that's not at all possible, you may want to talk to somebody else on your bariatric staff to address the concerns that you have with that, with that particular person. Per- person. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is kind of hard. Right. But you can do it. Yeah. So next week, we're going to come back. We're going to brainstorm. We're going to share our advice. But for now, I'm going home. Yes. Man. And Shannon's getting ready for the, the yeah. trip to the zoo. So anyway. Pack my sushi in the yes. box. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Bye, guys. Bye.